What is up, everyone? My name is Sabina Hoog, and I'm so excited to be talking to y'all today about God's presence with us throughout our lives. I know when I heard this, I immediately thought about King David and how God was with him in the cave. God was with him when Saul was chasing him, that God was with him throughout his entire life. And I think that's very important for us to remember that God has not forsaken us. God has not left us. And it can feel that way. But I promise you that God has not left you where you're at, that his presence is with you, whether you feel it or not. God's presence is with you. He goes before you. He's always beside you. I I remember an incident in my own life. It was my first year at Lead College, and I can be very brutally honest. I hated it. I hated it because I I didn't know what I was there. I felt like I was in tremendous pain. That my identity that I had, my former identity, had been cut away. No more athletics, academics. I didn't, the things I found fulfillment, I couldn't do that anymore. And I remember crying out to God. And in those moments of pain, in those moments of cutting, of refining, God met me. He met me there, but I knew his presence had gone with me, that his presence was there. That he was just saying, trust me, Sabina, that I am with you. That I have great plans for your life. And I want to encourage y'all today that throughout the Old Testament, we can see God's hand in characters' lives, in people's lives, that he never left them or forsake them. Even when it didn't make sense, God was with them. One of those amazing characters is Abraham. Abraham, who who was referred to as Abram before his name was changed. He didn't have a son, him and his wife, Sarai. They didn't have an heir. And he was starting to become an old age. And God met him. God made him known to Abraham. And he made a covenant with him. And they were doing this blood covenant where they were sacrifices and the animals were cut up and there was a blood drench. And Abraham was waiting for God to walk through. And God walked through and he made this covenant with Abraham. And in Genesis 15, 18, it says, On that day, the Lord, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. And said to your descendants, I give this land from Wadi of Egypt to the great river of Euphrates. And I think that's incredible that says the Lord made this covenant with Abraham. That the Lord is personal in that. That the Lord showed up. That he walked across the blood blood trail. That he went there. He went to that covenant. That he was a part. Because a covenant is not a one person thing. Two people make a covenant. However, Abraham still had a problem. Even though there was an incredible promise from God that I will give you a generation, that I will give you children, that your people will take this land, that your kids will be as numerous as the stars. He didn't have any kids yet. He didn't even have a son. How would his descendants take over the land if he didn't even have an heir? Later on, Jacob, I, later on, Abraham gets pregnant and he has a son And it's incredible. And we see the story of one of Abraham's distant relatives, his great grandson. And God makes another promise. This promise included that God's presence would be with him. But the promise to Jacob, to Jacob, who later becomes Israel, is incredible. In Genesis 28, 10 through 15, it says, Jacob left for Sheba and sent out to Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put his head under it and lay down to sleep. He had a dream, which he saw a stairway resting on earth and its top to the heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending. There above it stood the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham, the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. They will spread from the west into the east and the north and the south. All of the people of the earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. We see that God is personal. That God met him. It wasn't just a covenant that God allowed Jacob to see him, that God met with him and said, I am with you. I am the Lord. Because God can only be with you. God can only be there if he makes himself personal. That we can't, 
I don't know if my friend's with me if they're not my friend. I have to know them for them to be with me. And God said, I'm with you. I am with you. We also see just in Jacob's life with his sons, Israel's son, he had a son named Joseph and he loved Joseph. Joseph was marked from God. He had dreams that he was going to be a ruler. But Joseph's life took a drastic turn. He was sold into slavery by his brothers. He is in Egypt. But Joseph still had favor because God was with Joseph. God had given Joseph that dream, that promise. So in Genesis 39, 22 through 23, it says, So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those things that held in the prison. He made responsibilities for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care. Because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. The blessing of God's hand on his life was easily seen. That whatever he did, the warden didn't even have to worry because he knew that Joseph would do it well. It says the Lord was with him. The Lord was with him and brought success to him, even though he was in prison. He was in prison serving under a warden. God still brought success. Eventually, Joseph became... A prince, Joseph became a prince of Egypt. He became second in command right beneath Pharaoh. And he had two sons. And these two sons, when he names them, you can see how personal it is. And you can see it's a response to God being personally involved in his life, God being with him throughout his life. In Genesis 41, about 51 through 52, it says, Joseph named his firstborn Manasseh and said, It is because God has made me forget all the troubles in all my father's household. The second son he named Ephraim, and he said, it is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. I think that's incredible because in a land that had so much hurt, God made himself known. When Joseph didn't know how it was going to work, God worked it all together for his good. That He says that God made me forget, that God made me fruitful, that God was with him. We can see personally, Joseph knew God. He knew God as a healer. He knew God as a redeemer. He knew God because God was truly with him. Another prominent figure that we see in the Bible is Moses. Now, Moses Moses was born as a Hebrew in Egypt during a time when it was not good to be a Hebrew. Pharaoh wanted to throw all, kill all of the Hebrew boys. And Moses was put into a basket in the river, and he floated on. And the Pharaoh's daughter grabbed him and picked him up, and he became a son of Pharaoh. He became a son of the king. And in Exodus 3, 11 through 12, it, said, it says how he was, he was going that he should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. Because when Moses was... Moses was in the household. He ended up killing someone. He ended up rebelling against God. He ended up rebelling against Pharaoh. And he had to, he had to go, and he had to go be in the desert, and he ran away. And this is when God's meeting him, when he's running away, when he had just killed someone, when he had broken the law. And so that's why in Exodus 3, 11 through 12, it says, But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you, that is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. And in Exodus 6, 6 through 8 says, And I will bring you to the land that I have sworn with uplifting hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. I will take you as my own people. I will be your God. And then you will know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the, under the yoke of the Egyptians. Therefore say to the Israelites that I am the Lord and I will bring you out under the yoke. I will free you from being slaves to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and mighty acts of judgment. God is with us and he is not just with Moses. He promises to be with all the Israelites, that he will be their God, that he will personally free them, that he will free them from the yoke of slavery. And when God frees them, Not only does he show that he's with them, that he's with that people group, 
But he later decides to make a covenant with the whole group, not just with Abraham, but with all of Israel. In Exodus 33 through 14, it says, The Lord replied, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. God's presence was with us, that he told Moses, he told the people that I will be with you, that my presence will go with you. He hasn't left them. There's an amazing book called Leadership as an Identity, and it says, God was with Moses. God was all Moses had and all Moses wanted. As leaders, we need to pray that God will use the pressures that we face to give us an insatiable hunger and thirst for him. This is a marvelous place to be. The more you hunger for him, the closer he is to you. When you cry, God, I need you, he answers, I'm right here, you have me. And that's what we see in Moses' life, that Moses met with God. He was the only person to have seen the backside of God, that, that Moses' Moses's face was shined because of the presence of God. And that's incredible, and we can have that. We can have that hunger because God is with us. God has been with us throughout our lives, and he promises to be with us. He promises to give us his presence. God's faithfulness to, to Moses reveals God's character to us. In the story of God and the story of us, it quotes, God's character is primarily revealed through God's hearsay loved for us. God's loving us means keeping God's promise to us. Hearsay is covenant royalty, translated as loving kindness, mercy and love and compassion. We keep the Torah in response to God's favor, not in an attempt to earn it. I think that's important, that we don't earn God's love. We don't earn his presence with us. He promises to us to give it to us because he loves us. And that covenant he keeps with us, it's to be our provider, our protector, to go before us, to meet with us personally. And he didn't give it to the Israelites after they did something right. He gave it to the Israelites because they were his people. Just like we are his God, they were his people. In my own personal life, when I wasn't saved, I was in a rough place. I knew who God was, but I didn't know him. I didn't see his hand through my life. When God's presence tried to come to me, I would push him away. I didn't want anything to do with it. I wanted to do it myself. And it brought me to a place of being suicidal, being so broken, so ready to end my life. Because I knew I couldn't do it anymore, that I couldn't. And God met me in that place. He saw my brokenness. He saw my wounds. And he said, I still love you, Sabina. I still want to be with you. I have not broken our covenant. I love you so much that I would send my own son for you. That he's with us. I am saved and loved because God with me. He's been with you throughout my life. He brought mentors in. He brought friends. He had one person repeatedly repeatedly, probably maybe a hundred times, invite me to church, even though I said no, because of his faithfulness, because of his involvement with our lives. God has given us promises, and sometimes it feels like they're impossible. But I want to encourage you that God doesn't give you a promise that he doesn't, that he doesn't provide with presence. That if God promises you something, while you wait, his presence will be there. I also see that when my circumstances do not align with what I think should be going on, that God, that God's still there, that whether my dream feels like it's not going to happen or not, that God's presence is still with me. Look at, we can look at Joseph's story. He went from a slave, he went to going to be a prisoner to a prince. From the pit to the palace, that's where Joseph went. Even though there were so many tough parts, even though there was so much suffering, even though he was sold by his own family, he can know that God was with him, that God redeemed it. Finally, I know God is with me. And in this book, in the in this Bible, he protects me because he loves me. God is with us throughout our lives because of his great love for us. That is the only reason God is with us, because he loves us because he cares for us, because he's personal in our lives. Thank you.